the records with some tails for her husband. Well, the Tales from the Hudson Band began as a recording project um, which featured uh, Pat Metheny, Jack DeJeanette, Dave Holland, uh, Joey Calderazzo and McCoy Tyner, Don Elias, and uh, um, it was an extension really of a record I had done in 1986. Um, just, it was kind of a self-titled record, it was my first album. And uh, the name of the uh, album came from my wife uh, in one of her dreams, and we live along the Hudson and so we decided to call it Tales from the Hudson, the album, and then it's become referred to as the Tales from the Hudson Band. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
My association with Michael Brecker started in 87 when um, I ended up substituting for Kenny Kirkland who went to play with uh, Sting. And I played in his band for about four or five years until he went, went on to play with Paul Simon but he always told me that eventually he'd start another band and if I was available he really wanted me to do it and of course you know I always loved playing with Michael. So um, when his project, project came together he called me and let me know. He told me that you know McCoy was going to play on a few tunes, and I said, "Well, great, you know." And um, I had played with Jack and Dave once before on a record of mine, and um, I always wanted to get an opportunity to play with them again. So that worked out. And as far as Pat, I had never played with Pat, but I've always been a big fan. So it it was a great opportunity for me to play. And furthermore than that, I mean, we did some touring in the states. <clears throat> and um, the touring was so much better for me than you know recording to actually get a chance to go out and play on a stage with those guys is really the best part of the whole package for me
Know Mike for a lot of years, and uh, we sort of played together on and off um, for quite some time. And because uh, Mike is influenced by Coltrane as, as well as a lot of other players, but he's sort of developed a voice out of that. And uh, Mike also likes the drums a lot, and uh, so when we play, uh, we have a, a good rapport, you know, rhythmically. And uh, uh, feeling wise so it's always a lot of fun to play with Mike and uh, uh, 
this the past year, a couple of years, we've had a lot of chance, to, had a lot of opportunities to play together. You know. Well, you know, they're all old friends of uh, of mine. I've known Michael since he was eighteen. We used to share. Uh, well, we had a I had a loft, and he had a loft on the other side of the block. He used to come across the roof to our house through the window to visit. So we've known each other a long time, and Jack and I have been playing together since probably 1967. So we're old friends, and uh, you know people call these all-star bands, but actually a lot of us have been playing together for a long time.
For me, the ta Tales from the Hudson record, of all the records that I've participated in as a sideman, is kind of my favorite one because of, first of all, just the you know level of the playing is very high, but, but sort of beyond that, the way that Michael planned the record and sort of the way he utilized all of the personalities involved to me was really advanced. And what I like about that record is that, to me, it's really a, a great example of what a modern jazz record can be. And when I say modern, I mean using all of the materials that are available to musicians at this point in, you know, 1996 or 7, you know. It's not uh, it's not an, a nostalgic record. It's not like trying to recreate something from another era. It's really of this time, which for me is sort of an essential part of what jazz is for me personally. Um, you know, I know there's a real trend towards sort of repertory music, but for me it's um, a little bit, um, I don't want to say pointless because that's too strong, but, you know, I feel like we have an obligation to leave things behind that are particular to, you know, our generation and the way we hear things because the same way those earlier generations will never be able to really be created, neither will ours. And, you know, the exciting thing for me about that record is that I feel like it captures something that's very particular about this time using a very um, advanced language. So I like it.
Thank <laughs> you.